Hello. Hello to all our students, our faculty members, and interested members of the public. Welcome to our first ever lunchtime lockdown lecture from the MBA School of MBA Credentials. Now you'll see me here uh, with a green screen behind me, a green wall. This is rather new technology that we've installed here at the school to make our online lectures uh, more exciting and creative. Unfortunately, due to the lockdown restrictions, the, the young student who was rostered on today to take care of my green areas is unable to be here. Now, if you haven't seen this, this technology before, uh, the camera is able to replace the green backdrop with some exciting and enticing eye candy. In fact, my good lady wife has been so impressed by what green screens can do that she's actually ordered me some green pyjamas. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what comes of that. And uh, one of my lockdown jobs this afternoon is to install the camera equipment in our bedroom so that the green magic can happen. But, but why have I gotten up here today? Why have I asked you to come to this lecture? You see, I've been told that, that many people are struggling uh, during this return to lockdown restrictions, and they're, they're in need of some relief, uh, some inspiration, and, dare I say it, a shot in the arm, uh, both literally with a vaccination and figuratively with some MBA thinking. So there are three themes that will guide me this afternoon during this short lecture. The first one is applying human resource strategy to getting jobs done around the home, especially for those of you with children at your disposal. The second is understanding the secret to applying discipline to forge new habits. And the third is borrowing from medical science to choose food to lift your mood, uh, complete with a shopping list and a recipe. So let us begin. There are many jobs that need doing around our homes. For example, on a daily basis, my good lady wife and I take turns in tossing a salad. In the laundry, we take turns when it comes to putting a load through. And in our backyard, I not only feed the chooks, but I give the garden a good trim. Now, while we've found an even-handed way of doing it together, I'm well aware that in some households, uh, domestic chores are not shared easily or evenly. So I've done some MBA thinking to see if there might be some insights from the field of HR or human resources to guide us. And sure enough, there are. Now my key text for these insights is Human Resource Strategy by the SHRM, or the Society for Human Resource Management. In a rather helpful way, the SHRM paper defines HR strategy thus. HR strategy means a system of human resource practices for a particular job or collection of jobs aimed at the best employee performance possible to meet the firm's ultimate goals. Now, a few things jumped out at me in that sentence. Let's see if they popped up for you too. Firstly, in the field of HR applies a system to a particular job, it says, or a collection of jobs. This means we, we might have one set of rules or, or guidelines for one set of chores, uh, while an altogether different set for another. Secondly, we use HR frameworks to get the best employee performance possible. Now, for those of you with children living at home, I hope your ears pricked up right now. And thirdly, we use HR to meet the firm's ultimate goal. Do you have a firm one? I'll come back to your goals shortly. But let's start with the jobs or, or collection of jobs that need doing in a household. Uh, there's cooking, uh, cleaning, uh, provisioning, transporting, even curating entertainment. It's a weighty discipline to be in charge of the television remote. 
According to the SHRM, there are two key strategies from HR that you might apply. Commitment strategies and control strategies. It suffice to say if you live alone or you share your house with a life partner, it's much happier to apply commitment strategies. You see, in commitment strategies, peers of equal power and experience divide tasks in a sane and sober manner, and you can take turns in finishing things off. However, where there is a power and experience differential, uh, such as when you have young children or teenagers, or you're in a house share situation in which you have the lease in your name, control strategies might be best. Of the five steps outlined in the SHRM paper, I'll look at two of them today. Firstly, you need to recognize your key processes. What are the collection of jobs that need doing without fail? Well, my good lady wife and I call these the three C's. Creating, curating, and cleaning. Creating involves uh, cooking food, uh, coming up with entertainments, and tending one's seeds and seedlings until they take root. To those of us with experience and fertile minds, uh, these tasks are a joy. In fact, this is my good lady's wife, a uh, good lady wife's uh, preferred field of endeavor, that of creation, because at harvest time, when I can provide her with a good handful, she never fails in whipping something up that leaves both of us equally satisfied. Uh, curating is my preferred task. See, I scour the TV guides, the, the radio guides, the, the podcast listings, the online library catalogue, and even my own diary to make sure I provide us with a healthy and varied diet of intellectual stimulation. While I do sometimes slip in a comedy caper, most of the time I present our household with good brain food, so that when we're in company, my good lady wife and I can be relied upon for being able to provide enthralling social intercourse. Cleaning, however, is the least enjoyable element in keeping one's home in order. And this is where those of you with children or casual housemates have an advantage. You see, while creating and curating are their own rewards, the group of jobs relating to cleaning are best handled in the context of economic transactions, so that a value can be placed on the tasks and people can be paid in money or credit to get them done. But how do you set a price on cleaning jobs at home? Well, for some guidance, I, I turn to the International Labour Officer's publication entitled Measuring the Economic and Social Value of Domestic Work. In a most helpful way, it quotes Razavi, 2007, who argues that such domestic work at home could safely fall under the umbrella of care work. In the ILO's Law and Practice Report, 2010, such domestic work includes cooking, cleaning, taking care of children, the, the elderly and disabled, and attending to domestic animals. Indeed, that's why I feed the chooks every morning. If we accept this definition of domestic work as care work, then my MBA thinking says we need to find a current award for care sector workers, and then we have our benchmarks. And thankfully, Fair Work Australia has just published its latest award settings, and we see that a level one care worker in Australia is paid $21.62 per hour. But does this mean that we should value chores done by our children or housemates at this rate? Well, not necessarily. You see, if we assume we will use lockdown as a starting point for this approach to household chores, then you might decide that your subordinates will start as apprentices. And Fair Work Australia says their hourly rate is $13.02. So if we round off our HR approach to being true to the control strategies, then we don't just need the reward of payment, but we need the disciplinary tool too to keep our workers in line. And to this end, the SHRM paper 
concludes with some tactics uh, to keep your workers, especially your children, on their toes during this lockdown. The first is to give regular feedback. Now, whether you set up cameras around the home or just do walkthroughs, your children and housemates will work harder when they can see that you're paying attention. However, I do caution you about taking this too far. I, I have heard about a rather earnest HR person who was inspired by English philosopher and social theorist Jeremy Bentham. See, Bentham developed the concept of the panopticon, a prison where the guards in the centre could watch the prisoners all the time and even make the prisoners think they were being watched all the time. You see, this HR zealot ripped out all the walls of his house and replaced them with glass windows. This is not what I'm recommending, unless you can budget for some more household chores involving cleaning windows, or unless you're in a share house with actors or even theatre critics who enjoy being in the public view at all times. Another tactic of control is to recruit large pools of applicants. Now, this is easy in a share house. If you hear of other people who are great house sharers elsewhere, invite them over to stay a while as a sort of internship. That will keep your lazy housemates on their toes. Of course, if you have children, this is a little more difficult. Because while it might be pragmatically ideal to invite other people's children who are good at chores to come and stay with you, uh, it's a grey area legally. Instead, my MBA thinking would suggest that you could mention to underperforming children that you're going to make some new ones if they don't pull up their socks. It would follow that if you started measuring up their bedrooms to make way for a new nursery, your message will hit home. And the final tactic is providing information on the company's performance, competitors and industry. In the case of household chores, this would mean uh, erecting a whiteboard with progress scores. Also, naming the Best Householder and the Worst Householder of the Week awards, and sharing stories about households who are doing well, especially referencing the Joneses from across the road. Now, my suggestion after this lecture is that you gather your fellow householders and set a list of weekly tasks. Ascribe a budget of labour for each task, and then purchase a time clock with facial recognition and biometric fingerprint technology so that workers, uh, uh, sorry, housemates and children can clock on and clock off for their domestic chore responsibilities. Now, the second of my three themes today is that of discipline. I mean, what is it? How does one get it? Well, this will be very short. You see, there are many grumblings among Australians in lockdown that they want and they deserve their freedom. However, with MBA thinking, we know that your freedom comes from within. Likewise, that's where discipline comes from. According to a new book by retired US Navy SEAL Jocko Willink. The book is called Discipline Equals Freedom, and I thought I'd share his insights with you today. In short, he says, the enemy of getting what you want, of, of applying discipline, is that little voice inside you that says, do it tomorrow. And don't we all hear that voice from time to time? I mean, for example, our rubbish collection day is Tuesday, and today is Sunday. But instead of my usual habit, therefore, of putting out the bins tomorrow, I will put them out today. Now that is discipline. Jocko Wilnick says you can uncover discipline if you find out what drives you. What drives Willink is the memory of his fellow soldiers who never made it back. Of course, most of us don't have the advantage of having a trail of dead colleagues littering our pasts to motivate us, so we need to improvise. If you're a home cook, you might think of all those nights that you planned to make a meal from scratch but ended up getting takeaway. Or if you're looking for love, you, you might think of all those people you saw on Tinder uh, but for whom you swiped the wrong way. Or if you're a great movie buff, you might think of those nights you planned to watch a deep and thoughtful movie, 
but instead watched another Stephen Seagal flick. In his book, Choco shares some important steps for gaining discipline in your life, and here are three of them for you to have today. The first one is make aggression your default mode. And what a happier world that would make. And this certainly is made easier if you stand at the entrance to a supermarket and, and just watch how few people actually scan in with their trace and track app. The second is to conquer your mornings and you conquer the competition. Now if there are things you must do each morning, the advice is get them over and done with quickly. Personally, I find that a hot black coffee and a bowl of steaming oatmeal leads to a good brisk bowel movement and a sense of great satisfaction. And his third tip is this, your body is not adapted to digest grains properly. Oh, I imagine that's why the bowl of oatmeal makes such a speedy and pleasing exit. But talking of food, I want to finish this lecture with my third theme today, uh, that of using food to lift your mood. For this section I will branch outside of MBA literature and turn to Eat to Beat Depression and Anxiety, 2021, by Drew Ramsey, MD, who, like me, is a professor. But Drew is a professor of psychiatry at Columbia University, a practicing psychiatrist and a farmer. The good doctor's insight is that when we are unhappy, such as many people are during lockdown, we have a feeling in our gut, a gut reaction that signals how unhappy we are. Well, that's because the many neurons in your gut are constantly sending messages to your brain, for instance, letting it know you've eaten enough. However, when the gastrointestinal or GI tract is not functioning well, gut-to-brain communication suffers. And studies have shown that limited GI tract function leads to higher levels of stress and fear, resulting in behaviours like buying more toilet paper than is humanly possible to consume. So what does the good doctor suggest? Well, he says we need to feed these good bugs who live in our gut with plenty of fibre and variety. And to achieve this, there are seven categories of food we need to eat. Let's go through them quickly. The first is leafy greens. This means kale and spinach, collards and chard. And we love them. That's why you might recall I mentioned earlier that my good lady wife and I love nothing more than having a good old toss in the kitchen every day so we can get our greens in. The second category is rainbow fruits and vegetables. Make sure you have plenty of colour variety not just with your multiracial approach to good HR, but in your shopping trolley. Now, one little trick I use when shopping is that I take a box of Stedler colored pencils with me. And as I pick up, say, an eggplant, I choose a pencil of that shade and shove it into my big fruit. I do the same with tomatoes and, and broccoli, etc. Until I've used up all my pencils and I have a shopping cart that looks like a porcupine on its way to Mardi Gras. Not only does this mean that I eat the rainbow, but the pencils make it easier to handle your vegetables and you need less shopping bags. The third category is seafood. I am not a big fan of this one. Although I don't mind the fishy smell, I am fearful of getting bones stuck in my throat. However, during this lockdown, my, my good lady wife is making sure I get my fill of boneless fish taco and she has me quite hooked. The fourth category is nuts and seeds. Apparently, getting a handful of nuts every day, along with a serving of seed, really fires up the brain. My fifth category, or his, is meat. The doctor says grass-fed is best. And in the sixth category of dairy and eggs, he says free-range is best. I wonder if the author's farm follows these practices. <laughs> I'm sure it does. And the final category is dark chocolate. Yes, it has its own category. The doctor reports that a study in the National Health and Examination Survey showed that eating high amounts of dark chocolate greatly reduces symptoms of depression. And so, what do we do with this information? 
Well, firstly, let's create a shopping list. Make sure that you pop out today safely and grab one from each item from the category. For example, here's my shopping list today. One bunch of spinach, one giant eggplant, one serve of crabs, one handful of nuts, one nice rump, one cup of handmade cream, and one three kilogram block of dark chocolate. That should have you feeling good in no time. Oh, and a recipe. I'll leave you with the professor's pick-me-up. You place a spinach leaf, some blended yogurt, and 500 grams of dark chocolate into a food whiz, and you make this delicious smoothie. Let me show you. Look at that, you can hardly see the spinach at all. Ah, that's very nice. No need to toss this afternoon because I'm getting my salad in that drink. Well, all the very best with the rest of lockdown. Remembering you can find lots of lovely and helpful articles applying MBA thinking to daily life at our website, mbaschool.com.au. And as our honorary professor Oscar Wilde once wrote, education is an admirable thing, but it is well to remember from time to time that nothing that is worth knowing can be taught. Good afternoon, and let's put the rest of our lockdown to good use. Adieu.